Okay. As I've said in the past, most of your practice sessions should start with theory. Okay? So theory. Whatever that means to you. If we can get these things working. And on the theory, when I try to give a class like this, what is important is motivation. <laughs> That's a <laughs> so how do you get motivation? Yeah. Well, yeah. you just have to decide that yourself. Everybody learns different, everybody motivates themselves different for various reasons. What I try to do is, within the teaching session, teach you what I have learned over a period of a lifetime, okay, and how I've learned it. And it all hasn't come from school. It's come from many different sources and so on and so on. And one thing that is very important, in my opinion, is books. Okay? Not only may be electronic books, but you've got to have some something in your hand or something for your senses to see, to learn. You can learn music by ear, but the bottom line is you won't get very far. Uh, most people won't, unless you've got an exceptionally good uh, ear for music. <clears throat> this is a book from when I was in kindergarten. I still have it. Okay, this book was written in the 1920s, and most of the stuff in there is still pertinent and very, very well done. So any student can learn from it even today. So one thing I try to recommend is that if you if you have an interest in something or you know it's important, especially to our young students, keep that book. Okay? Don't throw it away. Don't sell it. So I've got several books that I have gathered over my whole career of, of uh, being a student that 50 years later they're still serving me. And it may be for 25 years, I don't need it. But later on, it comes. And that usually comes from something that you show uh, what we have called a passion for. Passion is a strange word, but most people who like doing something develop what is called a passion for, which means that they want to do it, no matter what. They want to do it, they've got to do it. They're willing to put out the time and effort. Last night, I watched the TV show, and this is on a new thing, but it showed the passion that people have for something, and it's on drones. We've moved into drones with our high-tech uh, teaching and so on, and this is a drone uh, racing league, D, yeah, D, drone, right, R, L. Mm -hmm. It's a whole hour show, and they also went to their website, and these are people now from across the world who are spending many dollars traveling in hotels and so on to race these drones, these little things that are here, and they put on this reality goggles okay, for the immersion vision and so on, and they race these drones around football fields and stadiums and inside big buildings and so on. So, and they asked the people what they did. One guy says, I practice a half hour every day after work. That's what a passion is. Mm -hmm. Something you're going to do it no matter what. I hear a lot of people say, I want to learn that. You know, I said, well, don't say you want to learn it. You've got to do it. Okay? That's what counts, is doing it. Okay? Then you've got to find the other thing is, is I don't have the time to do it. Well, I don't know about their schedule. But on my schedule, I have after supper from 6 to, we don't go to bed until late, from 6 to 12 or 1 or 2 is a lot of hours. So there's many times that you have time that you don't think you, you do and you plug that into learning. Okay? Or the things that you have a passion for. So the other key is to build on something. When you learn something, keep doing it that you're going to get better and better and better every year. And that's what we try to teach you 
under the theory of the practice session, old songs. If you play that old song for 10 seconds every day, for 365 days a year, times 10 years, you're going to know it, right? And most of these songs are relatively uh, simple, which we're going to go over today, and uh, easy to learn. But again, you've got to keep doing it over and over. Under theory, on a practice session, we've got three parts of four parts of it, really. So one, two, three, four. Erica, what are they? Should be doing them. New songs, old songs, fractures, fractures and number one is theory. Okay. And so we're coming up to Christmas time. The other thing to learn music, generally speaking, is learn seasonal music. You learn Christmas music at Christmas time, you're going to play it. Uh, learn Happy Birthday and play it for somebody's birthday or everybody's birthday. Okay? And then uh, Fourth of July, learn patriotic music. Veterans Day, learn patriotic music. October, learn German music. Whatever. But learn music seasonal that goes along with your life. All our schools are out of school in Christmas time. Christmas is a special time of the year for almost everybody in the United States, one way or another. So tie your music into that. So what we're working on now is two songs. Jingle bells, and our music is big note music. It's got the letters in it, so it's easy to put together in a mind frame of how it's going to fit into your finger pattern. And the other one is Jolly Old St. Nicholas. The reason we picked these two songs for you to learn, why growth, or to learn, I know, is they're five finger songs. For the chorus of Jingle Bells, you're going to only use five fingers and you do not have to move. say every good boy does fine. He said it's F sharp. F and it's got a sharp in it. Sharp means you're going to go up one. one half step. Flat means you're going to come down a half step. On the black keys, what that means is you're going to go up the black note or you're going to come down. This is a sharp. This is a flat. Up for sharp, down. down for flat. One half tone. Okay. Now we've gone over a 
song structure before. The song structure is the way the people wrote the song. They wrote it against that harmonic pattern to give them that song. And it's written against harmony, and it's written against the rhythm. In other words, these are different notes. Da, da, da. rhythm, different timings, okay? but that's the G chord, the G chord is G, B, D, one, three, five, one, three, five, where's the D complicated and sound better, they add number four. G, A, B, C. Now C is number four. So C would be C, E, G. So in the key of G, jingle bells will always end with the G note and the G chord. It'll probably start with the G chord. Doesn't necessarily have to, but probably will. The G chord will be there during the whole song. Then it's going to go to chord four, D, e, F sharp, A, back to G. They're going to do what's called resolve. Always go back to number one. Same thing here with chord four. C, E, G. So if you look at your music there, you put your hand down, okay, third finger on G, B, D, one, three, five. Put your third finger on B. Go back to the B, 
GBD is the G chord. So now, if you look at the music, you've got two chords per measure. Especially for the ukulele player. You see that? Yeah. Whereas at the start, you only have one chord per measure. Now comes the part where you have to start doing some learning. Uh, and we've gone over and over it again. It's the circle of fifths. C, F, G, B, E, A, D, B, E, A, D. One sharp, one flat. Okay? Circle of fifths goes this way. So one sharp, no sharps, one flat. Then we come to two sharps three and three sharps. And we also do one other complicated thing. These chords are what is a chord, what we call the basic chord, a major chord. Okay? Three fingers, okay? But you've got more fingers than three, right? You've got five. So you can easily use four fingers. So what they do to make it sound better,